Hey everybody, welcome to Accounting Excel. Uh, today I'm going to go over um, how to do a weekly cash projection. Um, and this uh, template is available in the store at accountingexcel.com. The link will be in the description uh, in case you need to download it. But uh, it's pretty easy to make. Um, let me just walk you through how it works real quick. Um, so here I just have the beginning date in cell B. So this will be the week's ending up along the top here. So week ending 819. The next cell I just added seven days and then I kind of drug that over so that it populates. So really you just need to update this if you wanted to make your week ending um, whatever date you want, you know, 930, 2019 it'll automatically update everything. And then this next row is the beginning cash balance. So this is going to be uh, what your cash balance is in your bank um, on the first day. Um, it adds the amounts that you've received, totals those here. Uh, your next one is uh, the cash that you paid out, it totals those amounts here. And then your ending cash balance. And that adds everything up. And that comes over to the next column. Um, so you can see that there's a formula in here, B20, that is the ending balance from the previous week. And so um, down here I have uh, some businesses have a line of credit, um, and this is kind of part of managing your cash. Uh, so I added a line of credit down here, and it's got the maximum amount um, that you can draw down on your line of credit, the beginning balance of your uh, whatever your line of credit balance is, the payments that you made on your line of credit, the, how much you've drawn down from your uh, bank line, and then your ending balance here. Um, and then it calculates how, how much you have available on your line of credit um, up to your maximum in this column or in this row. And then it shows the total available cash that you have for operations down here. Um, shows your bank balance plus the amount that you're, you can draw down on your line of credit. And this is kind of the same as the, the cash portion where it takes the beginning balance is the ending balance from the last, the last week. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a freeze pane here um, so that it doesn't move whenever I scroll. All right, so um, as I said, this is available at the Accounting Excel store. Uh, I also wrote a blog recently about this. Um, it's called Managing Cash When It Gets Tight. And so this is a tool that I've used uh, in the past to kind of manage my cash and kind of determine, you know, if I need to pay uh, some vendors, um, kind of prioritize them and prioritize my payments so that I, you don't want to run out of cash. And this tool helps, helps you not do that. So to illustrate this and how it works, I'm going to um, pull in a couple things for the example. So I have hidden here um, an AR ledger and an AP ledger. I'll just pull those open real quick. So really what you want to do is you want to start with your beginning cash. And for this example, we're just going to start with a bank balance of a million dollars. So go ahead and enter that in there, and then you can see how it populates across. Um, and then the second part of it is you want to you want to populate uh, your customer receipts um, and your receipt section of it. So you can do this manually uh, by coming over to. And I should kind of back up for a second. Your accounts receivable ledger. This typically would come out of your accounting system um, if you have one and it probably won't be formatted like this, but something that you definitely need to have is you need to have the due date of when it's supposed to be paid, and you need the amounts. That's, those are two kind of requirements for this cash projection to work, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this due date and we're gonna populate those um, as, they, as they are projected to come in uh, during these weeks. So real quick, um, as I said, you can do it manually, and to do it manually, what I would do is I would just 
kind of sort these by the due date. Um, and if you um, find the sort filter, um, it's over here kind of cut off, but you can sort this by column B to show the oldest outstanding um, receipts that you're expecting. And so it's kind of organized in that manner a little bit already, but you can see here how there's some due dates on 814, some of them are on 830, some on 914, some on 930. So instead of doing that, and I think this is a better way to do it because once you do it, it takes a little bit of time to set up, but once you do it, you can kind of uh, drag the formulas across and keep this spreadsheet going for as long as you need so you don't have to continually manually do everything. So the way I'm going to do that, and I've created a video on this, uh, there's a sum ifs video out there that I put out um, to kind of show and walk through how a sum ifs function works, but that's what I'm going to use to do this. So to do that, I'm just going to go sum ifs and we'll put the sum range. So what I want to sum up in this cell is the amounts. So I'm going to go ahead and select the amounts. And so it puts a range in here of what I wanted to what I wanted to sort. And we're just going to lock that in because I want to drag this formula across different cells. So I'm going to push F4 and that puts these dollar signs in there so that you can uh, drag it and those cell references won't move. I'm just going to hit a comma. And then the next part of that is the criteria range, criteria range. So I want it to sum based on the due date because I'm trying to project out when these receipts are going to come in and I'm expecting them to come in on the due date. So I'll just go ahead and push F4 to lock those in there. And then the next part of this is the criteria. So our criteria is going to be the due dates. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select this cell because that's my weekend. So I'm expecting it to come in by this due date. And if it, if it meets this criteria, it's going to sum that amount up into this cell. So go ahead and cl close my parentheses there. So now what this does, and I need to change this back because I kind of set this example up uh, with a certain date in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. So what this does is it looks for anything that's on 819 and it sums it up here. So right now it's a zero. But what we, don't, what we want to do, so this, this is a weekly cash projection. We want to uh, sum up all the days. So right now I just have one day. So an easy way to do that is just to copy this formula. I'm just going to put a plus sign here and paste that formula in. Okay, so now I have two formulas. And so I wanted to I wanted to look to this 819, but I wanted to look to 818 as well. So in the criteria, I'm just going to put minus 1. And so what that does is it makes it look for 818. And uh, I need to look for an entire week. So I'm going to put minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6. And I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick um, to, to save a little bit of time. Okay, so you can see here where I finished off the rest of the formula. Uh, I put in from 819 and then minus 1, minus 2, all the way through minus 6, and that should encompass the entire week. So go ahead and hit enter there, and then I'm just going to drag this across to populate the rest of the spreadsheet. So what this did is it just looked up to the AR ledger and summed everything up and put it in the correct buckets on this timeline so that we can see when, we're, when that cash is going to come in. So the second part of this is to uh, get our vendor payments populated in here. So I'm going to do the same type of thing with a sum ifs function to populate this. So just go sum ifs, and then my sum range is going to be the amounts. And I'm going to go ahead and lock those in, pushing F4, comma, criteria range is going to be the date for my first criteria. Go ahead and hit F4. And then my criteria is going to be 
the date. And I'm going to go ahead and hit F4 on the row for this one so that it locks in it locks in the uh, the number four because I'm eventually going to drag this down to the rest of these vendor payments to continue populating that. Alright, and then my criteria range two is going to be the vendor rank. So I'll go ahead and populate that. Hit F4 there. And my criteria for that is going to be, for in this case, it's going to be a one. So delete this out and just you can put quotations if you want or you can just leave it as a one. And that'll end that formula. Okay, so that's populated. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and populate the rest of these and uh, come back and show you um, because I need to put in the same type of thing here, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6, so that it populates the entire week, and then we can drag it across. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, so you can see that I put in, just like I did above, the rest of the formulas, uh, minus 5, minus 6, um, you know, populating the rest of this formula. So now it's pulling over from the AP ledger. And what it's doing is it's looking here and it's saying, okay, these amounts here, it's putting it into the correct buckets based on the date and the vendor rank. So right now it's looking for vendor number one. So a couple of these. And this guy's in yellow. He's a vendor number five, somebody that we're likely not going to pay. So we don't want to include them in our payment schedule. So this is populated. We can go ahead and drag this over with the rest of the spreadsheet. So now there's just a, a couple uh, little things left. So as I said before, we're going to drag this down. So go ahead and drag this down to the rest of these for the, through uh, two through four. And you can still see that the formula is there. But what it's doing is it's looking for the same information. It's looking for vendor number one still. So what I need to do here is I need to replace this with vendor number two so that it looks up number twos. So to do that I'm just going to go here, I'm going to push control F and what that does is it pops up a, a find box. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace that. So in my formula I know that I have a comma one in there right now to look for vendor number one. So I'm going to put comma, two, or comma one and I'm going to replace that with comma two. And this is just a a quick way to do it and you, you kind of have to select more than one cell so that it has a range to look in if you just select one cell it's going to do it to the whole spreadsheet it's just some advice there and then uh, go ahead and replace all and made seven replacements okay close so we can go ahead and drag that guy over populates there and then the same thing we're going to do control F do a replace this time we're going to do a three. Replace all. We're good there. And then we can go ahead and select the last one. Do a comma four. Replace all. And it's all replaced. Now we can go ahead and drag these over as well. Okay, so we have everything projected out. We have all of our customer seats projected out uh, for three months or 12 weeks. And to, to continue this on, all you need to do is select, select this and just keep dragging it. So if you want to add a week, it's really easy to add one. Extend that so we can add, go ahead and add by just dragging it over. And you can drag it all the way down through the line of credit. So let's go ahead and make some assumptions and I'll kind of illustrate why it's so important here. So we've got our customer receipts, we've got our vendor payments. But what we're missing is still our payroll payments. So there's a row here for payroll, ta payroll and taxes. So let's just assume that our we know that our payroll is around 200,000 every every two weeks. So let's go ahead and put that in there and see how it affects everything.
So by doing that, now you can see where we're kind of kind of run into a problem here. We don't have enough cash to cover all of our payments. Uh, so what we need to do, what we can do now, since we have this, is kind of manage this. So let's go ahead and make a couple more assumptions. Let's let's pretend we have uh, a max available credit of seven hundred fifty thousand. Just go ahead and put that in here. Go ahead and put 750,000 in there. We have 550,000 outstanding on our line of credit. So that leaves us available 200,000 left. And down here is the total cash available that we have. So you can see that we, we still have a problem here because because we're still we're still going negative. So in this in this kind of this can happen a lot. If you, if you don't if you can't foresee the future, you kind of run into some problems here. But since we can see what's going on, we can make some decisions in September and October that'll have an effect on this cash balance back here. So we know we have $200,000 left. So what we one thing we could do is we could draw down on our line of credit. So if we draw down our 200,000 here, that gets us to a positive cash balance. So that gets us through uh, October 14th. We still have positive cash, but we still have negative cash in October going into November. So what we kind of need to look at, this is when this prioritiz prioritization of the vendors comes into play here because we have first priority, second priority. First priority is kind of like you, you don't you want to make sure to pay them because if you don't pay them it's going to shut the company down. Um, second priorities kind of helps for sure keep things running. Might be able to delay them a little bit. Third priority delay a little bit more. Fourth priority you don't really want to pay unless you absolutely have to. So in this situation I would kind of be looking at these fourth priority first to see how much how much can I get um, by not paying these guys. So if I don't pay these people, I can, I'm still, I can make it through November, but I'm still, I still have a problem here in the, on November 11th, so maybe I need to come up here and start looking at third priority, or maybe I need to push this out. So that's kind of, you know, this, that's what this tool is used for, is to kind of assess and analyze what your cash is going to be, that way you're not just working day, day after day without any insight to the future because if things don't work out properly you might run into some problems. So if you guys think this video is helpful uh, give us a thumbs up. Uh, as I said before the account, this spreadsheet, the template is available on accountingexcel.com and the link in the description is, is, uh, will lead you there to the download and uh, save you some time by downloading that and uh, we'll see you all next time.